Anyone who's seen gravity has had a tiny little taste of what life is like several hundred miles above the surface of the Earth. But while we were trying to experience it vicariously via Sandra Bullock's 3D eyes against a green screen, a tiny handful of people truly know what it feels like to be in space. We are joined now incredibly by three astronauts who are currently on board the International Space Station. They are Koichi Wakata, Mike Hopkins and Rick Mastraccio. Can you just tell us physically where the space station is currently located? Where on the planet would I have to be to gaze at the sky and know that I'm looking up at you guys? Uh, you know, that's a great question, and I, I have to admit, I don't know. I had to look at the map right before uh, we started here, but there's a good chance we're uh, over the Pacific Ocean because that's where we seems like we spend a lot of time. Yeah, it comprises a large portion of the Earth's surface, right? And where are you guys actually located on the station? It looks like you're just floating around in, in midair. Where are you, and, uh, and what are you doing? Yeah, we're actually in the U.S. laboratory, and so this is kind of the primary portion of the uh, USOS segment. And so this is where we do a lot of experiments, but it's also where a lot of the systems are located that uh, help keep us alive. Well, we're doing quite a bit of uh, studies related to uh, how our bodies change in zero-G. For example, we do ultrasounds. We have, we're, we're all uh, basically trained to do ultrasounds with ground guidance, ultrasounds on our eyeballs, ultrasounds on our spines, on our heart, different things like that. And we're also, uh, we're, of course, we're constantly doing blood draws and urine samples to see how our bodies change and are affected by the zero-G environment. Is this to study the impact on your health of potentially much longer trips in space? Is that the point? Exactly. You know, right now, uh, most of our missions are about six months long. Pretty soon, we're going to have one-year missions. I believe the year, I think next year, we'll start a one-year mission for uh, an astronaut. And then eventually, we may even go longer and longer. And this is still so we can see how the body is affected by the weightlessness and the environment of space, and also how we can, how we can uh, protect the crew members, how we could uh, keep them healthy for these long-duration missions that it's going to take to get to Mars and beyond. How do you stay healthy in zero Gs? Yeah, we have a pretty extensive exercise uh, uh, program uh, using uh, uh, aerobic uh, machine, a uh, bicycle machine and treadmill, as well as a resistive exercise device. We exercise almost two hours every day to, uh, to stay healthy. My boss, Ariana Huffington, uh, likes to put an emphasis on defining success beyond just money and power and thinking of really re bringing wonder back into our lives. Ha has being in space given you a, a fresh sense of wonder? Oh, absolutely. There's not a day that doesn't go by when we have a chance to look out the windows down at the Earth that we don't see something just truly incredible. Uh, in fact, the other night, uh, Rick and I were, he just happened to be in the cupola. Um, it was night, and uh, we were going down uh, near Antarctica, and the northern lights were, were just absolutely incredible. It, it, was a, it was a scene that we've never seen before. Um, it, the whole sky was lit up green, and you had blues of the horizon where the sun was just over the horizon. And uh, then we had Venus come up and the moon come up, and it, it was just a, truly amazing. What does that do to your head? Well, it kind of blows you away. Uh, you're just uh, you're just in awe at, at how beautiful the Earth is, and you're just every day again. You're surprised at at some of the sights that you see.